Hey, it's Steve. Welcome back to Clear Direct. This is part two of the fuselage build episode. There probably will be a part three. I thought I'd be getting a lot more done in this episode. I'm filming this intro at the very end. Spoiler alert, you can see where I'm ending off the episode. But it's been crazy. I haven't been uploading a lot lately, if you haven't noticed. Been back to work, working a ton, had COVID, got married, and just the craziness of life. But I'm kind of settling back in, and I have a New Year's resolution to just get more videos out there. I have really high standard, you may disagree, but really it it's, feels like a burden and I want it to not feel like a burden, I want it to feel like fun again. I'm getting closer on the build, I'm getting my engine here in about two months. I've got all my avionics in, I'm do, been doing, that's another reason why I haven't been filming a lot is because I've been doing a lot of book study. I've, I'm gonna be putting together a full episode of kind of everything I've learned. I'm doing a full Garmin G3X Touch with autopilot and GNX 375 navigator and also a battery backup. I'm getting ahead of myself way more later on that. This is fuselage part two, enjoy. Seems like a good time to break out the new dental tools. Here's an idea on how to help to clamp this down. I used a little two by two. I do not like the fact that there are ferrous nut plates in this magnetometer mount. Drilling out the rivets. When I flip it over, I'll drill out the rest of them. And uh, drill out these guys. Replace those nut plates with just some stainless steel hardware. Turns out the GMU-11 installation kit comes with hardware to mount it. Done. Ferris crap gone from the magnetometer mount. Now just waiting for my GMU 11 mounting hardware to show up before I can close the top skins out. The thing that I'm just thinking about now is how come a lot of people are mounting the trim wire through the bulkhead? They're drilling extra holes through the bulkhead as well as the magnetometer uh, harness through the bulkhead. And I'm guessing it's to keep it up off the floor, but I contact another builder who has given me so many good tips. Matt, you know who you are. Um, he's awesome. He said he's using a tube as a conduit, um, and then he can just pull the wires through there and it should keep any sort of moisture out as long as the conduit doesn't terminate in that area that has moisture. So up in the cockpit should be just fine. So i am got some mold right here. That should work perfectly. What happened? Oh, we disconnected the tail cone from the cage, obviously. Flipped it over because of a couple of things. Let me talk to you about that. I just trimmed up these tail wheel steering cable exit fairings. Kind of cleaned them up a little bit because we need to test fit those as well as need to drill out some rivets. So this is very important for you folks building a tail dragger. Um, unless they have changed the instructions. Let me let me flip the camera around and show you what I'm talking about. Okay, I got them initially drilled with a size 30, but ideally it'd be a size 29 drill bit for an 832 machine screw. All I've got is a size 28, which is pretty close. Should be just fine. So now I'm upsizing it to a size 28, and then we'll go ahead and transfer drill those on to the airplane. Don't, don't, do don't do that with one hand. Okay, after a few attempts of different sizes, I think 11 64ths is your answer. Um, Googling it said a size 29, but a 28 was too small. So I eventually stepped it up all the way to a 3 16th, which is a hair big, but it'll be just fine. I think 11 64ths is your, is your answer. There you go, fits just fine at uh, 3 16 You drill the holes as marked on these and see what I mean? So at least they're consistently off. So clearly I'll pick one hole, bore it out a little bit more, and then I'll just JB weld or epoxy a washer in there. It'll be fine. 
Okay, I mixed up a little JB Weld to get the washer in there. All right, now for the nut plates. You know, I'm not sure when the best time to, I mean, these are removable, so really at any point you can drill that out, but I uh, was just thinking to myself, I wonder what the size, and if the instructions tell you what size, I'm sure they do, hopefully. So there's a rivet hole, it's supposed to go back there and there, there and there gonna be finicky to get but I think with my right angle drill on this from this vantage point should be just fine especially with the long bits Whew, those are helpful 12 is gonna be too long so let me switch to the sixer <laughs> I've pinched myself more times than I can count on this thing so be careful as you're tightening it up that's a threat much more better oh yeah Okay, I flipped it back over and started locating the nut plates for the end of the tailwheel steering cable exit fairing. Um, you'll notice this one's a little bit tight, but it's just at a different angle to fit and everything looks pretty good. So I'm going to start drilling with the long size 40. Can't emphasize enough how much these are good. Okay, I've got the nut plate holes located and I got to thinking and reading ahead in the instructions hey where does it tell us to drill out that hole or these holes for the tail wheel mount and the answer is nowhere <laughs> so I figure while I've got access and can drill this way rather than hunting around and trying to find it from the bottom with tail skins already mounted so that we're not caught off guard later on I don't have an extra long five sixteenths but i do have a really long 40 and 30 drill so i figured um we could just start out small to keep it straight down there especially on these guys these are just um three sixteenths i believe look it up I'm, i think these are three sixteenths and that's five sixteenths i'll double check that of course but we'll get the hole started this way and then we'll kind of match drill on the um, bottom side because there's no way to get a standard jobber length drill um, down there and relatively straight I don't believe maybe here because there's this big opening okay number 28 5 sixteenths and then 33 3 sixteenths so we'll step it up slowly first with the quarter Now five sixteenths. Okay, now four three sixteenths. Oh, I cleaned all these holes and primed everything again. So we are pretty much ready to put the cage back on and then start with top skins. Ooh, I gotta put in one more, uh, four more rivets. One, two, three four and I can mount the pulleys so I think that's what I'll do tonight and then get the get this back on the table tomorrow I am just now embarking on kind of one of the more annoying tasks from what I've seen from the other builders that uh, are YouTube but again another shout out to s 21 Animal Project P20, uh, P2 Arrow uh, all you guys are giving awesome awesome hints and I feel like I'm a little bit of a leg up um, having never built one before especially in you know, I am definitely not very good in patience. I have patience for like tying flies, fly fishing. I think avionics is gonna be good for me, but fitting, pulling something out and retrimming, i.e. the station four closeout right here, um, I'm just gonna have to kind of take my time because I know it's not gonna be one of the things that I love most. So I've got the top stringers out ready to fit in station four. I've got it marked out for my first cut. Say mark an eighth inch around the top and bottom. There is a little bit of a cut mark right there. I'm not sure if you can see that. S21 Project, Tony, 
He uh, cautions us about this corner right here. So I'm leaving ample room right here. And then I guess he kind of forgot to do the spacer early on. So I'm gonna get a rough cut, get the spacer in there and then start the painful process of just putting it in, marking, taking quarter inch, eighth of an inch at a time. All right, after about mm, six, I'd say, trial fits, we got it looking pretty good. So just kind of focused on the bottom to make sure that that slides back. Um, pretty quickly, I'll do the spacers, the little discs back there. But for right now, I can now trace that and cut to that so that it slides inside the skins. Didn't really talk about these very much. These went pretty darn smooth. It just took a really long time to file down the edges right there, but the but the bend went smoothly, no cracking. I filleted it, filleted it, filleted it, bent it around something with a, a fairly wide radius, which was a two by four. The, the soft edge of a two by four was about perfect. The reason why I'm bringing it up now is because I need to put it in place so that I can trim up this guy. I take two hands. I also matched the welding right there. Got the notches cut. And then this is interesting because to get it, you know, it's easy to put in right now, but there's gonna be the forward top skins in there. Um, and so you've gotta get them around these um, angles. And it bends a little bit, but I just, you know, I'm going for easy. So I cut it pretty large, so it'll be easy to get in and out. So the next step is to cut the spacer. I've got it marked three quarters of an inch. Uh, and then we'll mount them behind here. Some PVC glue. Number 11. Man, that was tedious AF, but I am done after 69 installs and removals. Looks pretty good. Not perfect, but uh, the window angles are not in there right now. But next thing is to try to put it in from inside the cockpit. Right now, it's been easy to take put in and out right there, but man, condition inspection, I'm not looking forward to that crawling back there, watching your weight, so you don't want to put your knee right there. Otherwise, it's a pretty darn secure, pretty big baggage area. So I got the stringer notches cut out up there. Oh, you know what I gotta do? I gotta drill through there and install that screw too. Oh man, <laughs> more nut plates. Okay, slid the top stringers back in, in preparation to start working on the top forward front skins right here. There's the window cut out. Got them weighted down. So I gotta put a curve with the edge forming tool. Put a little lubricant in the tool so it slides a little easier. Make double damn sure you're doing it the correct direction. Funny story, on one of the wing skins, I did it the wrong way. Luckily that was the first um, bottom, I think it was the left bottom wing skin I did. <laughs> So that suddenly became the right bottom wing skin. But I always have to do it about two or three times. And it's almost imperceptible, the, the curve you're putting it. But it's enough. So you do this on the wing top and bottom skin. You also do it on the top skin of the tail cone where it overlaps the longeron right there. As well as you might be able to see a little bit better on this. Once it rivets, it'll have a nice little bit of pressure pushing down on the other side. So. This is the right window. 
Kind of see the uh, edge form, what that does right there. Before I get too much further, I gotta get the windows in. Drill out that to a size 27, which believe it or not, Ace Hardware had a size 27. Not even Home Depot or Lowe's have numbered sets, so that was awesome. All right, I've got the windows here stacked. We were supposed to drill out the holes to number 27. So, you know, most everything in here is size 30 on this airplane. So 27 is slightly larger. It's point uh, 0.1440 of an inch. Size 30 is 0 0.1285. So you're, you do that because this is a Lexan, a soft material, so when you pull the rivet, it's going to, a size 30 rivet, it's going to expand. Um, and I guess you don't want to warp the, the window. So what could you do instead of size 27? You know, it's pretty darn close. It's a 964, so that's 0 0.1406. 5 30 seconds is quite a bit bigger. So um, if you don't have a size 27, number 27, I think the 964 would go pretty well, but I don't have a 64, well, a 964. Drill bit. So luckily I found the 27, so let's get this going. You know, I can see having ah, a size 27 drill bit hanging around unmarked as a bit of a threat because it's so close to a size 30 and size 30 is the very common hole. So um, I'm gonna take some tape and just mark this off as a, as a size 27. Zeros with this window support angle, I drew a line down the middle of it so I can line it up and have it be centered. Number two is I want to drill a hole through the a hole. Through the uh, top gusset, put a Clico in there to prevent it from sliding around. Number three is I want to put some pressure, i.e. a clamp right here to keep some tension on it to prevent the pillowing. Something I did a little bit out of order is I didn't drill in Clico and rivet the aft section of the window support angle as of yet. The directions had you do it a while ago, and that is to be able to line up that black line back here as well as up here. Otherwise, where it says in the instructions to drill and rivet that thing, you don't really have a lot of uh, understanding on where exactly it's supposed to go. You can get it close for sure, but I just wanted to kind of Save that till now. By the way, if you go to rands.com instructional videos, Edmund Gill, Eddie Gill, he's got a bunch of good videos, about four for just this portion. Third hand would be great. I'm gonna take the skin off of it though, just to go through the gusset and the angle, not the skin. So otherwise that locks the skin in place and the idea is to get the pillowing out. There we go. So it's just through the gusset and the support angle now. That way this can get pulled and it shouldn't get pulled so much that that hole will be irrelevant. We'll just upsize it to a 30 and it should be perfect. Okay, something else I should probably point out is I still have Clico's from the middle gusset into the Longeron, which will interfere towards the end um, of drilling down here. But that's not relevant right now because we're just doing the window support angle up here. So you don't, I don't think you want to remove these right now because that's kind of keeping the structure all together and aligned, right? So. Um, and if they were pointing out this direction, there'd be too much interference. All right, let's get to drilling these out, match drilling. Okay, look at these two holes. Can you see that? It's a little bit oblong. So that's either an indication of a dull bit or something else going on. So I'm gonna switch to a size 40 for the rest and then come back and upsize it and switch to new bits. All right, that went pretty well. 
Obviously it's time to upsize or final size those. Um, but I was noticing some interference right here that's causing it to sit away from the cage a little bit. As well as this is left intentionally a little bit long. So we've got to shear that off. Old hole drilled with 30. New hole drilled with 40 and then final sized. Old hole, oblong. New hole, nice. Good hole. So I've enlisted the help of a beautiful assistant. Using string to get the line of the stringer. Something I else I just noticed, and I think they mentioned it in one of their videos, Rands, that um, if you look from this angle, way up at the top, so follow the center line, and then at station four, it turns just a hair. So I'll take a string, I'll extend extrude that line all the way to station three at the top there, and then we'll cut it so that this line is straight. Okay, I'm gonna leave this episode here. Let me just update you on what I've been up to in the last couple weeks that I haven't been filming and haven't been working a lot. So you haven't been missing very much, but it's been a lot of tedious stuff up here. Getting these holes kind of lined up, located, drilled and final sized, as well as final sizing the spine. I just did that right now. Now I'm ready to kind of take everything off, clean off these skins, but I've got a couple reminders for myself of things to do. I've got to drill a couple holes in the window support bracket and rivet those in. I've got to get my antenna mounts and doublers in and um, ensure to put some cotter pins in the pulleys for the uh, rudder and the tail dragger. But also, if you look right here, I've located where I'm gonna put the ELT. Um, let's see, G no, yeah, GPS. That was COM1, but uh, GPS. And then COM1 is gonna be up here. So the other thing that's kind of taking me some time is I've made some templates that I've gotta to take to the local EAA to bend, um, you know, break and shear out of a bunch of stock that I've got thin, thick, and medium, the Goldilocks. As you can tell, I've also brought the fuselage off of the table to be in a lower position to work on a lot of the high stuff that's been really helpful to me. I got a, um, just a couple of buckets right there and then a sawhorse in the back. Um, and of course, once I did that, I've re-leveled everything off. So that should be able to catch you up. I think I've filmed pretty much everything with the baggage floors done, it's sitting right here. I've got the station floor closeout done. The shop's a bit of a mess. And like I said in the intro, I have a New Year's resolution to just kind of get more frequent videos out rather than just make them a long production. Um, hopefully it doesn't uh, sacrifice the quality a ton. Um, I just think that um, in this day and age, the YouTube generation, we just need to get more content out there and it'll help me just kind of stay on top of things and rather than get behind. I've got a lot of other cool videos coming uh, down the pike. I mentioned the avionics video. Um, I went out and you probably have seen the best tugs video. I'm gonna review that, do a full review on that guy. I've also got another video where I've set up Apple HomeKit to have Siri turn on my Bonanza engine heater out in my hangar 20 minutes away, which is awesome because it's been chilly. Single digits, I've been wanting to fly, so. That's enabled that. ELT for the, the mount there. I got my antennas out here. But I got a whole bunch of goodies upstairs that I can't wait to tear into. It's past Christmas and I haven't opened my uh, avionics yet that I flew out to Oshkosh to go pick up personally. That wraps it up. I'll talk to you guys on the next one. Till then, you're clear to wreck.